Hi, my name is Ed Gregory for photosincolor.com and today I'm going to show you how to master the tone curve in Lightroom. This is where we have the ding -ching. Okay, so the tone curve in Lightroom is one of the most powerful ways of editing your photographs. It really is quite amazing considering it's just a line that you can twist and bend. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you really what that means and how powerful this is in both being creative and also how you can actually ruin, ruin an image very quickly. So let's jump straight into Lightroom. Here we are. We are in the develop module, which we can get to by pressing D. Um, but here we are already in develop. Now we're going to be using this image today of Josh Strickland. It was um, if we look at the info, okay, it was shot. We used a flash on this 110 millimeters at f2.8. It's an amazing image. We can hit reset. This is the basic image that we have here. Um, let's come in so we can see it a little closer. It looks great. So the tone curve is on the side just here. Okay, so the basic tone curve, basically what it is, this is a line just here and the bottom of the line represents the shadows and the top of the line represents the highlights, the middle, the midtones. It's pretty simple. So let's just move this around. If we look at this image of Josh just here, if I move the center, the whole of the image is going to get lighter. And if we look up here at the histogram, as I go darker, the whole histogram moves into the shadows. Really simple. We can see the image getting lighter and darker. So let's just reset that. Uh, we're going to come out actually so we can see the entire image like so. So how can we use this differently? Well, if we wanted, to, for example, to lift the shadows a little bit, we can take the shadows, which are in the darks, click to make a point, and then we can drag that up, which makes it lighter. However, we can see the entire tone curve all the way up here is lifted too. Now, if we reset this, now we can actually choose where to do this. So if we were to make a point in the middle, just here, and then have this point down here, that when we slide this, what's going to happen is it's going to do those shadows, but it has dropped this. So we can add another tone point and lift this up like so. And by doing this, what we can see is we've just lifted the shadows. Way too much, but that is something we can do. So again, let's reset and let's do the same thing for the highlights. Make three points, I would suggest, like so. And then if we just move the highlights higher, for example, we're going to lift this higher and we can see just the highlights are moving in this image and not really the shadows. And that's how we can create something very different. So how can we use this to actually create an effect that you might want to use? Well, let's look at taking, um, adding a little contrast. We can add two points for contrast, one here and one here. We can add contrast by making the darkers darker and the highlights lighter. Added contrast so quickly. Conversely, we can reduce contrast by making the highlights darker and the shadows lighter, like so. Now what we're not changing is the color at all. It's just changing basically the exposure of different elements of the image. So in this, we can see we've added con um, reduced contrast. So let's reset this because there's some other very powerful things that we can do in fact. Under here, it says RGB. Red, green, and blue is what that stands for. So if we were to go to the red channel, that's only going to be changing the reds in the image. Okay, and nothing else. So if we were to take the midtone and boost the reds, if we look, the whole image will go red, like so. Or if we go down, the whole image will go away from red and go into more teal or turquoise in color, like so. Just you, that's the basics of the color wheel. Uses the opposite end of the spectrum. So if we reset this, I'm now gonna show you using this exactly how this affects things. So down here, I've built this and this has the red, green, and blue. So let's come in here and we're going to look at just the red, the green, and the blue. That's all we're going to look at just now. So in the red channel, if I change this, watch what happens. The red channel changes, the green channel doesn't do anything, neither does the blue. If I go to green, 
Now if I do the same thing, see the green channel changes, but neither of the other colors actually change. And then just to show you, just so that you know, go to the blue channel and we can do the same. And you see that completely changes color, but the other two don't. Now, if I was to do this all at the same time, so that would be the RGB, red, green, and blue. Now watch what happens. This now, all of them change, okay? And all of them change this way. And you see red and green and blue change differently. And that's because those colors have more or less luminance and they interact differently. So it's quite complicated. So if we were to look at the top section here, where you've got your darks to your highlights, we use RGB. You can actually see, um, I'll crop this so that we can keep the focus on the right area. Now, if we look at this section here, now if we move the just the darks and we make the darks darker. If you look at numbers one through four, that's what moving, but eight, nine, and 10 aren't doing anything. Whereas if we were to do the same thing, but just do the highlights, nine, um, six through ten are going to move but one two three four are not and that's what's happening to our image so that's the basics of the tone curve but now we can start getting really creative so for example in this image if we wanted to create an old film look that's how we crush the blacks basically so under RGB I would do a one in the middle one partially down here then I would take this and I'd slide this up Okay, about this amount, and already we can see it's added this old school film look. Now, if I was to come into red, what I'm going to want to do in this image is boost the midtones for the reds just a little bit, and the greens I'm going to reduce just a little bit. Okay, and then with the blue section, if I was to increase the blue in the midtones and in the shadow in the highlights, reduce them. Okay just by making those few settings what we've created is this really great old school look and we haven't changed the basic the split toning the detail nothing else in lightroom only the tone curve and that really is how powerful it is i can go into more detail in this but for today's tutorial i just wanted to go over and show you those features now you can always come down here there's a point curve button and if you come in here it's currently set to custom if you go to linear, it will turn it all back into a straight line. It has medium contrast, which only affects RGB and adds those lines in here. And it has strong contrast, which just boosts those even more. That's all Lightroom gives you. Everything else is up to you. Now, once you've made a point, okay, so by, double cl um, by clicking on the line, so I'll make one point here, one point here, and one point here. Now, if I want to remove one of those, I right click on there and then delete control point. And I can do that all the way along. And then anywhere else, if I right click, I can go flatten curve and that deletes every single point and resets the image. So that's my overview of the tone curve and really how powerful it is. If you have any questions, please um, write the comment below and we can sort that out. But please hit subscribe and even give me a thumbs up for this video if it was helpful. Loads more videos to come. My name's Ed Gregory. Uh, for photos in color and i'll see you next time for another lightroom tutorial Doo -doo 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 -doo.